Hey guys, and welcome back. I hope everyone is doing all right today. I'm doing great, and you should be too, because it's that moment of the season now where we go inside the Castaneda's club shop for the shirt printing vlog. Exciting times. So if you guys are new around here and you don't know what this is, so pretty much we actually go into the club shop and try and predict a new signing squad number before they get announced. So this is when I'm absolutely certain the castle are gonna sign someone. We go in there and we attempt to predict the squad number. My current record is three and one. The last one we did was Anthony Gordon. Don't get me started on him. So I predicted that Anthony Gordon's squad number would be 20. Then all of a sudden, a couple of days later after my shirt printing vlog, John Joe Shelley was so just completely out of nowhere. At that point, I knew the game was over. So we lost the streak, unfortunately, to him. I'm hoping today we can get it back on track. I'm a bit worried after losing the last one because, well, if I don't get the squad number correct, that's £85 out of the window. But honestly, for me, uh, if I get it wrong, it'll just become a, a signature shirt. So all the signatures will go in the front. We'll just forget that ever happened. But hopefully we'll go 4-1 up. I don't want to go 3-2. But aye, if you guys are new around here and you like what you're watching, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button as well if you enjoy the video. Make sure you let me know down in the comments section what squad number do you think Sandra Tonari will be at Newcastle. Now, the favourites I've seen online is either 6, 8, 20 or 21. How in the hell am I going to get this one correct? It is so hard to predict. So we'll tell you a little bit more about what squad number I think you'll be inside the club shop. But I just wanted to talk about his transfer quickly first. So on the player side of things, it's been agreed. The player team has been accepted. Tonari is actually getting paid more than double his salary. A lot of money. It's huge for a 23 year old. Dan Ashford was actually over in Italy talking to AC Milan trying to get this deal done. And when Ashford goes somewhere, he cooks. I know this guy as well. So I was convinced the second he got on that plane that we'll have this deal done. And now it looks more or less imminent. I can't see it going pear ship. Other than one option, which I'll explain in a moment. But as for the transfer figure side of things, um, Obviously, we've uh, offered 70 million euros, which is equivalent to around 60 million pounds. AC Milan want a, a tiny bit more, which is why it's still ongoing. But they're happy with the fee. They just want to put a couple of add-ons in there, which is what the club's currently negotiating. So a little bit of a last-ditch attempt to try and get a, a tiny bit more money out of Newcastle. But ultimately, they're going to budge. Uh, Newcastle will have this deal done. The only problem I see really is if for the under-21s at Italy, Tonali gets injured. Let's say he blows his knee, tears his ACL. Any injury, I think Newcastle will call the deal off. But as long as he doesn't get injured for Italy, I think we have this in the bag. I don't see this one going wrong at all. And when you think about it, this is a huge transfer coup. You managed to convince an AC Milan fan who supported AC Milan his entire life, dreamed of playing for him. You managed to convince him to go away from AC Milan to join Newcastle. What do you think about it? That is mad. We have so much power now and it's exciting to see. But enough of me talking, I've been going on for quite a while now. Let's get inside the club shop and tell you some more things that are going on. We are now upstairs in the club shop. You can see on that wall behind me, it is empty. Not only is it empty as well, because store actually brought new stock in yesterday. A delivery actually came in and already the wall has less than 10 shirts on it. By the time you guys are watching this video, that wall will be empty. That's a problem because, well, the club could still are going to lose out of money. They were supposed to be on our delivery towards the end of the week, early next week, but ultimately, there's not an exact date, so I couldn't tell you the answer to that. Now, I didn't believe the delivery came in, so I've done a whole thing. I've actually went to Sports Direct to buy the shirt. I feel dirty inside, didn't enjoy that act, so... But Mike Ashley, he ain't my problem anymore. Not my problem at all, so there you are. Ashley, thank you, there's some money. But I did feel awful about it, and that's probably the big problem for you guys now as Newcastle fans. You have to go and somewhere else and get them, uh, especially uh, sports direct. You kind of don't want to do that. But back on topic, though, so as I was saying outside to Nari, the favourite numbers for him to be in Newcastle is either 6, 8, 20, or 21. Now, I don't think he'd be 8 because um, Newcastle, I know Tonari was 8 at AC Milan, but I don't think it's a good idea to give him the number 8 at Newcastle. Anthony Gordon's just came in. Someone for me that is lacking confidence, he scored once against Chelsea, someone that I think probably will look back in that season wish he'd done a bit more. So I think for us as a football club then go, Anthony, Tenardi's coming in now, you're no longer number eight. I think it's a bad move, I don't think it's nice on him, I think it's, some people might not think it's a big deal, but I think that would probably affect him mentally and knock his confidence a little bit, so I wouldn't do that personally if I was the club. Number six is a little bit different because Jamal LaSalle is not an active player anymore. Somebody that will occasionally come off the bench, but ultimately he's a player that 
he's had his best years behind him at Newcastle, I would say. Someone now that's going to be squad depth, someone there that I think will stay at the club, but ultimately he isn't going to play much at all. So he's one that I probably could see potentially low on his number. As for 20 and 21, uh, of course, Ryan Fraser is currently 21. He's not going to stay. He's going to go. So I think those two are definitely possible. I'm going to back one of them. You're going to see which one it is. I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail by now. But I'm going to back one of them ones. I don't think Newcastle will swap Anthony Gordon, the Jamal the Sousa number. I could be wrong. There's so many different options, but I'm going to back one of them. So I just paid for my shirt print before I'm waiting in the queue now. I got taught that it's a three-hour wait. I mean, I definitely don't think it's a three-hour wait. It's probably about, what? 12 people waiting us though so I think within the next hour I'll be up there getting my Tenardi shirt on. We have now left the club shop and there you can see it, Tanari 20 we went with. The last time I picked 20, I got it wrong. I've got a feeling this time I might be correct. If I'm wrong again, now I'm going to be livid. But he has a, a scary fact for you as well. This is actually the sixth and you can't say the home shirt I have this season. Now I actually effed it up because, well, I bought a few shirts in advance to make sure that if the club shop was so out, I could just go in and get the shirt printing vlog done. But I've already got the Champions League badge on the shirt, and because of the fact that the Champions League printing's not in, I pretty much had to get a new shirt or I had to incorrectly get the old one on. So I was thinking, well, you know what? Let's just go to Sports Direct and accept the loss. Again, didn't feel good about it. It's one of them ones where, this is now I want to get the shirt printing vlog done. We've got Tenardi on, and uh, we'll see over time if I've got the correct number. But not only that, because of the fact that Newcastle now seem to have their midfielder option in, it's already been reported who Newcastle's next target is. We seem to be looking for the out-wide player. Dominic Saboskai is the big one. If we get both of these in, then oh my God, it is a good window before we even touched any other areas of the pitch. This £75 million pound budget, I mean, this is 60 plus already gone on one player. So someone tells me we're going to spend more than £75 million. Pounds. Shock horror. But it has been class though, I've been loving it. It's so good. Um, just one week later, you're getting a player in, as I said in the intro, that's an AC Milan boyhood heel. You managed to convince him to leave AC Milan. Again, I just can't quite get it in my head of actually managed to do that. And so Newcastle now have got the final negotiation to do. As long as he doesn't get injured fairly, I think we've got it in the bag. There's no way AC Milan have that power anymore. The player's clearly happy to join. He's happy with the, the double wage boost he's getting. And uh, and Newcastle point of view, we've got all that money now. We'll, we'll get it done. Someone will budge and Newcastle will get this deal sorted. Big player, big move. And he's... Looks like he's going to get his medical done in Romania. So any cast of staff members are even wanting to go meet him just to get that medical done. So as soon as he's done it, you can just come across and be a part of the cast United squad. And that was the big thing as well. I said in a couple of videos that Newcastle cast needed to get deals done before the gates had matched because of the fact that two days later you're playing Rangers. Then after that you're going straight to America for two weeks. So for any cast, it's important to get players and especially for that America trip. When you're away for a couple of weeks playing Premier League opposition in a hot climate, it's important to have that squad together and make sure that the players are getting some game time before they can actually properly play for Newcastle in a brand new season so over the next couple of weeks I'm expecting Newcastle to seriously push for some players but again they won't rush things though they'll only get deals done if it benefits them so it's a case that you guys will have to be a little patient with the likes of James Madison I still don't think he's dead after this side I think Madison's probably one where we'll have to wait out and see what happens to him but once that valuation drops I probably will expect Newcastle to try and go back in for him for now, those seems to be the out wide options. Left back still seems to be one that Newcastle targeted a bit in this window. We'll see over time. I said at the start of the window that I probably expect Newcastle to get around five, six players. That includes loan signs, by the way. That doesn't mean that we're going to be spending money on all these players. I'm just including loan signs. There. But I do expect Newcastle to have probably about half a squad, a couple of squad depth players, about three or four you want to try and get in the start of 11 just to make sure that Newcastle have everything we need going into the Champions League. This could be our one and only shot. I don't think it will be, but it could be our one and only shot at the Champions League. So we need to make sure we make a good account out of ourselves. Bye. Uh, enough of me talking. I've heard a lot of me in this video. Apologies if you're sick. I hear my voice by now. But it's one of them ones where it's going to continue happening with this transfer window on. Let me know down in the comment section. Do you think Tonali will be 20? I'm still not sure. Uh, I backed it. 
I've done it now, the deed is done. We're gonna have to wait and see. Have I got 20 incorrect for the second time in a row? I, I sure hope not, but we'll see. Thank you guys for watching though. You take care now and I will see you all in the next one.